And I remember throwing up in the green room before the show. It was the Laughing Skull Lounge in Atlanta, Georgia. And the guy, older, more seasoned veteran, came in and he goes, first time? I go, yeah. And he goes, they can't kill you and they can't put you in jail. And that was oddly, <laughs> I go, huh. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! What's going on, everybody? This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show. Happy New Year. My favorite day of the year. I hope you guys had a safe Christmas break. I hope you guys had a great um, New Year's Eve. hope you all made great choices, <laughs> good choices that your grandparents would be proud of. Some of you are like, I partied with my grandma, dude. But whatever it is, I'm glad that you're with us. We have an incredible show today. Um, it's going to kind of be honest. Um, the today's show is a special. It's not. We're not taking calls. We have a special guest, and it's one that you have probably heard of, and I've heard parts of the story, some behind the scenes stuff, or you think you know the story, and I promise you don't. Uh, as I say, I promise you probably don't. Today's guest is an extraordinary comedian the great John Christ. He's a neighbor here in Nashville, and he joined me in the studio to talk about really um, no holds barred, about getting canceled, about addiction, about recovery, about what redemption looks like, about asking for forgiveness, all of it. It's one of my favorite conversations I've ever had, and I'm glad that we were able to capture it and um, invite you all to listen into it. Um, he's selling out shows all over the country. His comedy's going great, but behind the guy on stage is a guy that's really, uh, um, had a hard row, hard road. And, um, he's walking it back. So as we start this new year and you have questions about how are you going to change? What are you going to do differently? What does, if you're dealing with addiction, you're dealing with, um, Struggles. You got some hard conversations with people that are going to come with some significant consequences if and when they find out. If you start asking questions about what does redemption look like? What does my path back look like? Please stay tuned for my conversation with my friend, John Christ. In my nerd world, addiction was first forever was a considered a moral failure. Okay, it's yeah. just because you're weak. Yeah. And then I got my own opinions why they shifted it to it's a disease. Yeah. And now there's a growing conversation, like a consensus behind closed doors, if you will. There's a few people saying out loud that addiction is actually probably your body working pretty good. It is doing what works to get through either some trauma or some chaos or a pretty messy situation. Where have you heard that? That's I from, heard that in like in the in the in the closed like in behind closed doors rehab yeah, circle yeah. like at that's rehab. that's that's nerd I didn't know that nerds. was out it's yeah. nerd talking yeah, 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 it's yeah. like maybe it's a little like I remember no, there was a girl true. in rehab that was there was uh like I'm going to say in high school like just mm-hmm. molested just yeah, yeah. by her somebody that lived with her yeah and she discovered alcohol mm-hmm. and alcohol worked saved her life that's right and yeah. that's the that's a to hear that is anyone listening to this to hear that you go that is uh that's hard that's a, you never even had heard a thought like that that's why I go where did you hear that no, because but, I've heard that in the very closed doors but, yeah, of like yeah. treatment centers no I didn't know that was it's, like it's oh I, I used to, I've told college parents for, like yeah, yeah. Years, like what well, my kids doing drugs like because it works it, cocaine now, works now it's, it's it'll it's, kill you yes but it works it, it is the only so if you go if you go, and I've been here before, you go, I cannot, I thought, not true, but I cannot, after the the glory or height of this comedy show, everybody, you know, signing autographs, everything, this is unbelievable. I cannot survive the night in this hotel room. I felt like closing that hotel door was like a prison cell. Yes. Without my cell phone mm-hmm. or uh, in some kind of relationship flirty type yep, situation yep. or alcohol, yep. I will not survive. Correct. Now, that's not true. Right. But, but your chest tightens I up. Thought, it closes in. Yeah, I thought. Absolutely. And yeah. so these these mechanisms mm-hmm. were prevented me from jumping out the window. That's right. Yeah, and yeah. now the, 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 the demons were just screaming so loudly. That's right. That, I, that those 
now a therapist would obviously say long term this is obviously going to have a lot of but it's not it is you go you see somebody out on Broadway drinking drunk or whatever that you want to judge them or you want to you go whatever his present situation is everybody has a set of tools mm -hmm. to cope with them yeah and this is the one this is the card he knows how to play that's right getting drunk and it's and long term it's going to be has consequences but this is the only one that might be keeping him on the planet yeah. now you got to give him another card right. I, i'm, I'm going to be by the time this comes out i'll be sober four years dude congrats thank you man there's another there's another i found another card that kind of trumps that card you can't just take that card away it's a great thing you don't take away somebody who just had surgery don't take away their crutches Without giving them something else, or the pain walk medication, or, right. yeah, at the beginning. Yeah. Now, yeah. now long, yeah, you go. Now we get it. Now somebody goes, "Hey, I've been sober for three weeks. Then I went back, and then I've been sober for a month, and I, I relapsed." Or I was like, "Yeah, that's how that's somebody learning getting off crutches that's somebody is, learning. Dude. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why are we crushing the guy? Yeah, for oh yeah, that yeah. was a big shift. It was about a decade ago when I used to ask college students like, "Why are you doing this?" Yeah, and the question switched to, "Do what happened?" Yeah. In Why? your world, that this is the best way your body's figured out how to get through a day. Yeah. That changes the question. Because that's one's super compassionate, empathetic, let's figure this out. And one is, oh. when you get your crap together, then you can come back in the house. And, and that's, and, yeah, was that of like a... Uh, it was over, it was over everything. Yeah. But then you were raised the same as I was. It, they, they meant well. Your parents meant well. Of course well. they and so did. did mine. And I don't like a lot of the deconstruction Burn it, and they yeah. are like to stop Everybody's it. Everybody's doing they, they had they had only their tools. They, yeah. Right? They had their tools. Right. And if you go back to them not who like I'll go, who are you mad at? Because you go back to your youth pastor, mm -hmm. he would be embarrassed too. Of course. He would be like, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I didn't I, I did the best I could with what I had. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go, I don't know. Like, yeah, do actions have consequences? Mm -hmm. Sure. Of course. No, nobody nobody's saying that right. it doesn't. When I was in in rehab into in uh that there was no he couldn't do nothing out there. Obviously, everything was taken away from. And then I remember, and I didn't even have any knowledge of this prior to going in. But I was like, you know, alcohol, and I wasn't. And then everything was taken away. And I go, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I have any addictions. I'm fine with. I'm not, you know, itching or. I, I go. I don't know. I'm pretty good. And then I remember, it was family week, and everybody's kind of family. People's wives would come to visit them, and this other guy in treatment center, his wife came, and then. We were in the cafeteria. I don't know where somebody, she walked by and goes, hey, I just want to let you know, like, I'm a big fan. And it, like. Oh, dude. Yeah, it was. I was man. like, oh, this is my this addiction. Is, it, she goes, hey, I just want to let you know, like, your stuff is so hilarious. And I go, oh, I'm back. Yeah. Or wh whatever the, okay, you know, yeah, and yeah, it was like, yeah. oh, that's, and that's what I, I, if I ever talk about it, it's like I'm fighting that. Gotcha. Once you get some privileges, you can go out mm -hmm. and, like, you can go to dinner with, with amongst supervision or you can go in rehab. And you can get your phone back, and you can get your car, and then it loosens up as you prove yourself right. to be trustworthy. <laughs> and uh, I remember one time the guys go, "We're just gonna order in food tonight. We're not." Gonna, and I was so pumped. This is the beginning of my uh -huh. recovery. He's like, "Oh, because when I went out, people said, hey. John, yeah, what up? Good to see you.'" And I was yeah. like, "Shh." Yeah. Like, and that's what I fight then and currently. Okay, so that's that's similar to like if you have a cocaine addiction. Yeah, you can. You can construct a life where you're just not there. It's not you're not around it. Yeah, it's yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. If you struggle with disordered eating, yeah, you have a different level of work because you have yeah. to make peace because you can't do life without food. Sex too. Sex too. That's yeah. right. Intimacy, yeah. connection, all that. You have to make peace with it. Yeah. And you have to do it so, like if you're are you drinking or not drinking? It right. Doesn't matter. Yes. There's the firm. Yes. And like or workaholism or that, that's, narcissism. Yeah, that's right. Like you have to work. Yeah. And there's a lot of these quote. Addictions or struggles, and by the way, everybody's listening is probably like, Everybody. okay, if you if you work in construction and you have a lunch break and you go buy three double cheeseburgers, crush them with a Coke and go back to landscaping, nobody's going to nope. call you on that. Nope. But if, you have a, if you're sad and uh, maybe you're, you got dumped mm -hmm. and you go, I'm feeling bummed out, and you go down and you put three cheeseburgers and mm -hmm. crush them. Right. We're maybe having a different conversation, right? So what is the so? 
your your workaholism, sex, eating, all these things that you have to do. What is your body trying to? But but when it becomes yep. the way you pacify yourself, yep. and from I could go dealing with life. I could go on a stand up. There's like a whole range of like people email me all the time and be like, uh, I struggle with depression. Your mm-hmm. comedy's lifting my spirits. I'm going through a medical. Somebody said like I'm I'm in the in the operating room, when I get out of my chemo, I watch your videos. Right. There's like, oh my gosh. And then there's this monster over here that wants attention yeah. and wants uh, accolades and affirmation for my insecurities. And I could be all on this range. Of course. And you're like, do I love stand up and do I love helping people? Yes. Yes. Also, mm-hmm. does the same activity, can it be expressed as? A very negative or like a, a acting out of my insecurities or pain yes the only way i've seen it work though is i think a lot for years we spent time trying to solve that that continuum yeah yeah instead of healing from the bottom up yeah being and if if yep. my body's not trying to hide from my own life from my, from me yeah then i can have a, yeah. i can have a couple pieces of candy sure, and i sure, don't have dude. to mainline the bag i told my girlfriend i go hey I need to go to the NASCAR awards just to make sure, like, just to, you know, to introduce myself. She goes, BS. Mm -hmm. It's actually more beneficial as a comedian to be amongst the people. Mm -hmm. I need to be in the grandstands, not in the suite. Yep. And so she goes, if you want to go and get your ego stroked, Mm -hmm. I'll go with you. And then we went, we both agreed on that, we had a great time. Yes. Just say, they they go, that's fine. Yes. Because you're human. Yep. Human, me too. Yep. Yeah. She goes, and I'd like to go rent a dress and get all mm-hmm. my makeup done. I'd like to go, yes. but don't say we're not doing what we're doing here. So where does that shame come from? That that secret, like I got to hold that. Yeah. I got to create a narrative around this, and most of us do yeah. it. I think without even thinking about it. I got to stay a Everybody. little bit later. I got to stay yeah. a little bit later work. Yeah. A little bit later work. Actually, you don't. You are uncomfortable being in the presence of your wife and your kids because you don't yep. know what you're doing, and so yep. you feel your body feels safer at work, and you're and you're. Uh, you're you're pretty good at work. A king here. You're pretty good at work. You're a king. You're pretty That's good right. here. That's right. So why would why would anyone be it comes per- down verbalizing secret, that? And then it comes down to that shame. Your buddy sat uh-huh. down with you and told you exactly this. Yes. You go, yeah, dude. I go to the thing and have the time of your life. I get it. Or he's like, hey, I'm struggling to be present at home because mm-hmm. at work everybody needs me. Mm-hmm. Whenever I'm there, I am a king. And when I'm home, my wife's like, you need to take out the trash. <laughs> exactly. And you go. If you told, if you sat there and told me that, I would go, yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. How would you respond with anything else but that? Or they tell you when you have kids, everything's wonderful, and yeah, they don't tell yeah. you it's real boring. Or it's just you're sitting in the, the you're sitting in the track meet for six hours and they haven't even run and it's hot <laughs> and, and, and yeah. you watch some kid do high jump and everyone's yeah. clapping and it, it's yeah it's not that yeah it comes down to that what's what do I think is gonna actually happen if I say this out loud? Am I gonna lose everything? Yeah. I'm gonna lose my wife i'm gonna lose my family i'm gonna gonna lose lose my my identity yeah and then you talk to people who like no i lost it i lost yeah i lost all yeah you had the only way forward is to give up was to make peace that it all is gone yeah yeah like dude i remember we would go to this like uh we would do equine therapy every Uh thursday yeah yeah. you would go off campus you'd get Uh in this van and go off and we i dude i'm not lying and this food and the funny thing about uh rehab if it anybody that's going to like Malibu and has mm-hmm. massages and that's not rehab. <laughs> that's not rehab. Re- this place, there's no women there. There's no drugs, alcohol, no cell phones, no screens, no movies, uh, no caffeine, no sugar, no fiction books. Oh, no, even if you like to get a runner's high for exercising, they would, you could just walk. So anything that would allow you to escape, gone. Yeah, anything gone. And so you and you, and it does reset. Mm-hmm. Your baseline, I was like, man, if I could go swing a golf club, mm-hmm. be for it. Oh right? my yeah. goodness! Right. If I, I would, go, if I could go see my nephew, mm. which as an addict or alcoholic, you don't, you don't want to have anything to do with. If I could go sit and watch a baseball game, yeah. a high school ba- <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> t-ball game, uh, you, you'd be like, this is incredible, right? And we would drive past this McDonald's, and I'd go, I would give <laughs> anything to. To be in there, yeah. to go sink my teeth into a double cheese. We talked about double cheeseburgers twice already. And the definition of addiction, by the way, is as simple as you can possibly put it: repeated attempts to quit despite mounting consequences. So if you have a drink and you never 
you never you're providing for your family. You're still present. You're that's not an addiction. Mm -hmm. If you're getting a double cheeseburger, like we we went up to the Kentucky to Keeneland the other day and we, and we gambled on the horse race. I don't. It didn't. I don't want to go back. Right, right. I don't want to secretly. Sure. I, it didn't, not, I don't know. Downloading whatever. Yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. And, I, I, and I lost 100 bucks. Yeah. It does that. I'm not saying I'm crushing it, but that isn't. Right. They go, any therapist or any, anybody go, okay. And if you go, no more gambling, I go, okay. Yeah. I, it doesn't grip me. Right. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, it's Deloney, and I talk about this all of the time. I love, love New Year's resolutions. I love the idea of everyone taking a moment to reflect, consider some ways your life is going pretty well, and some things you'd like to be different, and then actually setting in place actual steps you can take to heal and improve your life. This might mean making exercise or great sleep a priority, doing a weekly budget with your spouse, or like I did last year, making therapy an important and intentional part of your new year. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, try BetterHelp. Because therapy isn't just for people who've experienced trauma or who aren't able to function. Therapy helps everyone find your strengths, overcome personal challenges, and practice new ways of living and working to be the best version of yourself. BetterHelp is flexible enough to fit your schedule because it's completely online. Just fill out a short questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. Plus, you can switch therapists at any time for no extra charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made this year with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Deloney today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Deloney. My dad had these stack of Cosby records and Steve Martin records. There you go. And I used to records, have a, yeah. a spiral notebook and I yeah. would write down what yeah. joke was funny and why. And really? what? Oh, dude, I was like try, oh, trying to pull them deep. apart. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I just want to know why, because I was so mesmerized by someone who could make yeah. somebody laugh. But it seemed like everybody was um, kind of okay with getting poked. And it, like, that was kind of mm. the thing, right? Like, yep. they were the prophets of your time. They could say what they want. Yeah. And now it seems to have shifted. Where you can't. You can't. Except, I was talking to somebody the other day, and tell me if I'm crazy. I think in 100 years, the story that will be written on this weird little snapshot of history yeah. will include Rogan and Chappelle as the guys that broke it, that made, I'm going to keep yep. saying this, and maybe that's crazy, but I feel like the, only, the last great voice is a uh, comedian. That's it. I feel like this a lot. You don't want to look back on your, your Instagram or your, whatever you're posting from like a year ago or two years ago and cringe at it. And you go, oh, I can't believe I posted that. Right. Right? With, yep. uh, with whatever the... Whatever it is. Whatever the social issue was. You go, oh, it's embarrassing. Everybody's like, oh, it must be tough being a comedian when yeah. it's... You can be canceled up for everything. I'm like, no, I feel like it's actually very... It's easier. Because in, in Carlin and Eddie Murphy, the line to, like, be inappropriate was so... Right, yeah. You had to say something so outlandish that people were like, and now all you have to be is like, mm. and the line, is right, <laughs> the line is right here. And it moves. Yeah. It, so it, you can just, like, whoop, and yeah, it's yeah. like, ah. And it makes it, it makes, because what comedy is is saying the quiet part out loud. That's it. The thing and, that most people are thinking. And now you're supposed to be quiet about everything. Right. So, and, and I, I'd say to my live shows, like, my live show is just a group text with your buddies out loud. I would say if Joe Rogan and Dave Chappelle maybe saved it, it, it is as... It, 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 and I just use them as, yeah. as examples of... Is it bold in other people that now there's a lot, there's a, yeah. People start, went to look and say, is somebody that big going to get taken down? Yeah. And they didn't. Yeah. And it's suddenly... Well, whew. it's unique. Yeah, it's unique in a way where... Joe Rogan, if Spotify said, we're out, he'd be like, all right, well, I'll go exactly. to Apple. It's, exactly. Yeah, then you have more... They're above the, I don't need to get paid. I'm above that. Uh, yeah. It makes you more honest. It makes you, at minimum, more honest. Right. So you go, I need to sell tickets. They go, I don't need to sell tickets. I can never, I don't never have to work again. But exactly. I'm just interested in the truth. There and you that, go. And, yeah, that's it. That's what, that's what Joe, I think, is great and as, at. as an audience member, I go, I may not go with you, yeah. but I know that's what your intent is. It's not to satisfy this. And you could disagree or, you could agree or disagree. Cool. But I'm even sorry. Joe Rogan says, yo, the homelessness in LA is out of hand right and when the the governor says we're really making a lot of improvements you're like i'm driving around <laughs> right it's yeah. not no it's not it's not right and now we have and my brother lives out there and he has kids oh, and oh yeah, yeah it's it's unsafe yeah. and it's unsafe for every like that's not true because the governor's office could call the local affiliate and say yeah. you're gonna we need this story we're cool. gonna run the story right. we have a new initiative or we have a, and you and that's when you look around and go 
No. Yeah. And no. the last time I, I saw you play, I, it was, you were saying things about parenting, you are saying things about going to the Sunday school that everyone thinks. Oh, and yeah, And everyone yeah, knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, it's, but it's that same, it's not Los Angeles, but it's that same, like, everyone's like, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's. I started in comedy. I was, um, as my dad's a pastor. Okay. And like in, in church and you would see maybe like, uh, as a pastor's kid, behind the curtain a little bit. <laughs> My dad was too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you so you go. See how the sausage is made. A little bit, yeah. and then you see the Sunday morning product. And from a young age, I go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and not not uh, not in a, in, in a anti Christian way, but I just go. You see the gap. Yeah. My bedroom backed up to my dad's closet, yeah. and he would pull that corded phone in there when oh, yeah. there was like stuff was going down. Oh yeah, and it backed up against <laughs> where I slept, and so I could just listen quietly. And then I would show up on Sundays, and oh, I'd yeah. see the guy in the suit. Oh yeah, or the woman in the nice dress, and I'd yeah. say, uh, "Oh yeah, that's there's something else going on here." And or, I just remember oh, that, yeah. dis- that that messed me up for a long time. Or the guy in that used to be in a suit, and now he doesn't work there anymore. Yeah, and you're like, exactly. Wait, exactly. <laughs> you're like, and God called him and to he's, a new he, church. <laughs> <laughs> he's terrible. He's pursuing other opportunities. No, yeah. Yeah. And, and some may, and he was uh, called away. And by called away, we told him, <laughs> you got to leave right now. Yeah, and yeah, as yeah. a guy that was performing in churches a yep. bunch, and, le- and it's not necessarily the, the behavior. It's people go, oh, I'm a human. I don't, but of it's, course. but you said, yeah, subconsciously or not, that you were. This guy. If Dave Ramsey was like a billion dollars in debt. Right, like, he had a bunch of credit cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we care about credit card debt? No, but you said. You said not to. Yeah, and that's, that's what right. that's what everybody has a hard time stomaching, which, uh-huh. which fair, very fair. Yeah. Yeah. And so time. I think there's just something about telling the truth. Yeah. But that's where I think com- comedy is so great is it, uh, it, you guys just walk out into the middle of that gap and you're like, here we are. <laughs> right? What yeah. are you, yeah. are we really doing this? And What's beautiful about the art form that I'm more passionate about now than I ever have is like some people would say, how come that comedian gets to – I remember making jokes like in the Christian subculture and the, like the some of the more, you know, Christian celebrities, if that's even a word. We were like, how come he gets to say all that? Mm-hmm. And it's how come he gets to go up there and just – Let it rip, yeah. And, and, I, and I've always said it's actually the opposite. We can only say what you already think. Mm. And if I said like, well, I was like, what's the deal with all the, the, the all the German population in Franklin? You'd be like, Who are we talking about what? <laughs> yeah. that does, it's not a truth, right? It, so it doesn't it doesn't go or spread or it actually falls dormant. Yeah. If a, if you make a joke and everybody goes, oh my goodness, that's the truest thing I've ever seen. That's what you make it go. Not the comedian. Uh, okay. okay. So the comedian does that. it has no power. You just the comedian just shines lights on things that already yeah. exist. And sometimes we shine lights and people goes, no, it's not in there. Oh, uh, okay. And, and like, and then you go, oh, yeah, good to know. I remember the first open mic I did. Somebody in college said you should try stand up comedy. Okay. It's the first time I ever the idea ever. I mean, I loved comedy, loved watching it. Obviously, I was more like. Uh, uh, Cat Williams, Bruce Bruce, one yeah, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. one one kind of generation yeah, yeah. behind that. But I, I was mesmerized by it. Same thing. And the guy goes, you should try stand-up comedy. And it, and I, and that day, I started a Word document on my computer about funny things. Stories. Kind of similar to you. Mm-hmm. Why interacting with this idea? Mm-hmm. And then it took me about four and a half years mm-hmm. to build up the courage. And I went into the open mic and I said, I want to. I went to the guy after, and I go, I want to, I want to do it. Mm-hmm. I want to do it. And he goes, All right. And he goes, He looked at his book, and he goes, uh, June twenty third is two thousand nine. June twenty third, and that was like a month from. And I, I mean, didn't sleep. Oh yeah. Didn't eat. Did, just walking around the neighborhood, like trying in your. Just, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just trying to. It's. I mean, there was thirty people in there. Forty maybe. And and I remember throwing up in the green room before the show was the Laughing Skull Lounge in Atlanta, Georgia. And the guy, older, more seasoned veteran came in and he goes, listen, man. He goes, your first time? I go, yeah. He goes, well, they can't kill you and they can't put you in jail. And that was oddly, (laughs) I go, huh? (laughs) What am I? What, what? That means the only barrier is you. And what were you scared of? Right. It seems uh, not sleeping, not uh-huh. eating, sweating, 
for, they're, they're gonna for put a you month. to death. Yeah. And I wanted to do it four years prior to that and couldn't get up the courage to go sign up. Hmm. So what was what was the fear? The worst case scenario is you gotta move back home. Yeah. And your parents will love you and that and you'll get back on your feet. You're like, and you go, oh, it becomes a more risk to stay yes. at your job than yeah. it is to leave. So the fear that fear overcame this fear. Mm-hmm. The fear of staying in my job and then I'm all of a sudden I'm too late and I can't go pursue it. And knowing that one time you did it, how how you how live you What's felt. the fear? Yeah, if you yeah, I mean, dude, but dude, I mean, you remember like him asking girls to prom? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah. But but And then what's the worst? But what is the worst? Yeah, they what is no. the worst? The, I remember but it happened. It happened. The, dude, I'll look whoever in the camera in the eye and say, the worst possible things that you could possibly imagine happening to you uh-huh. has happened to me. <laughs> I, and we're laughing about it. Right, right, right. The worst possible thing that I could ever imagine happen outside of yeah. death yeah, right. happened to me. Yes. And now you go, well, we're playing with house money now. That's it. Or like, That's it. That's it. Or what? And you know, it's always someone on the other side of it that's like, yeah. oh, I'm playing with house money. You're playing with house money? Yeah. I mean, I was in rehab in 2019, and I go, we were putting our lives back together, everybody was in there, and I go, we're about to get out of there, and I go, guys, more bad stuff is going to happen to us, mm-hmm. right? Death, parents, uh, all of it, disease, yeah. losses of jobs, like, like, look at the country, more bad stuff mm-hmm. is coming. So, to rectify this current situation, okay, but put a position yourself to whatever... Whatever horrible thing is going to be like, all right, cool. Because be like, I've been there. Yeah. And you look at, you look, sometimes you look at grandparents, they act like they don't care or they don't. I've been there. Yeah, dude. They go, all right. <laughs> I speak to my, my granddad and be like, hey, dad, granddad, this thing's happening. Just it, real slow. He fought Nazis. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We're probably Not that right. your situation isn't important. It is. But you're good. But we're, he goes, you're good. Well, <laughs> and it's very slow. Right, it's like, yeah, well, yeah. back in my, and you're like, well, how can you have this perspective? Because they been through it yeah that's right and you look at a, at a kid that we all were at one mm-hmm. time and you go hey i my bike has a flat tire this is the worst it's the end of time it's the end of time right when i asked that girl to prom she said no i got rejected online too you did <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> I, you looking at the camera listen dude? i was kind of a cool kid yeah dude well, I, don't, I don't understand i went to her house i took my shirt in dude I went to her house I, I didn't went to her house she, front door front door knocked oh, on the door she told me no in person so did mine so did mine i had a couple i walked out and i didn't I couldn't believe it. You didn't know, even know how to turn on the ignition on in your car. It never occurred to me that that could happen. <laughs> it's it, not funny. It it's is. not funny. Oh, super well, funny. Now, it, but at the time. Well, I, did, I was, it was listless. I, I just, I, 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 you were like, I'm going to have to transfer schools. That's what I thought. I'm just going to go out in the parking lot and set myself on fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have to make another Rage Against the Machine cover. I, I, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I got, yeah. And then I asked somebody else and we had a great time. Like oh, there's a whole gang of us that went. It was a blast. yeah, of course, of course. It yeah, was, you at the at the, it was a better experience than had I just taken one person by our side. It ended up being as big free for all as a blast. Hey, I've got some great news for you. You get to choose, whatever you do, good or bad, moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices, over time they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that helps me every single day is Hallow. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world on planet Earth, and they're giving you three free months to get started. And people always say, you got to meditate, you got to pray, you got to have a spiritual life. And for many of us, we don't even know what that means. We don't even know where to start. That's where Hallow steps in. Three free months to prioritize your mental health, your spiritual health, and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, the lo-fi station that I love, guided prayers, meditations, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic. You can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness, build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, to figure out what you even believe in the first place, and choose peace. And remember, Hallow is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Deloney today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Deloney. What does redemption look like anymore? Because I feel like we're wired for small communities where 
you get out of step and everybody calls everybody back. Yeah, and, yeah. Or there used to be some kind of guiding narrative. Yeah. Like we all kind of believe the same-ish things yeah. regionally. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. all gone. It's gone. Oh, yeah, gone. Yeah, so the only yeah. thing you can do culturally is we just burn everybody to the ground. You have to. And yeah. I have, you have a pile of ashes everywhere. But for everybody. For everybody. Yeah. I think for me is that I, when I was at my unhealthiest, mortgaged all of my worth into the hands of these people. Outsourced it. Yeah. yeah I go, y'all tell me. What my value is. That I'm good or by the ticket sales or my social media numbers or if my videos are, uh-huh. y'all, y'all tell me. They burn you to the ground. Yep. I go, my, I, I, I love to tell jokes. Mm-hmm. I love to do stand up. Yep. I love, but I cannot, I cannot put it back into your hands. Yeah. I gotta, can't. It's got to be me. Yep. Behavior aside, my worth, redemption would be, hey, it, it, would redemption for Michael Jordan be winning another championship or it would be, I don't, I would like to still play basketball, right. but if I win or lose, I'm still okay. worth yeah. of, of infinite value. I want to be the best parent. I want to be the best businessman. I want to mm. be the best chef. I want, everybody goes somewhere to get their worth. Right. Everybody does. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's on this continuum somewhere. Yeah. I don't. Uh, so I know somebody that likes to cook. Wherever they show up, they bring. That's just their flex. Bacon, and everybody yeah, yeah. goes. We love you. Thank you. You're like all right. And we again in rehab. Another we. There was a guy Friday nights. We could do whatever we wanted. Okay. There and but you have to. You would have to give a on the weekend before we left a calendar of everything we're going to be doing. Okay. Right. This guy loved to cook. And he would, we would all week be talking about, dude, we're going over to Jim's. Jim, we all live in these apartments, Jim's apartment. He had these spreads that were, oh, dude, what's Jim doing Friday? I can't, I can't wait. And then they said, hey, Jim. That was his, that was his heroin. Yes. And he would come over and everybody goes, oh, Jim, this is incredible. And we'd all be talking about it before, anticipating it and after. That was unbelievable. And that was, and they go, hey, Jim, no more cooking. And that, and then, so you have to look yourself in the mirror now and go, oh, am I the Who was I the I? cooking guy? Yeah. And that all the way back to the beginning, the addiction, that that he lived by that. Yeah. His yeah, whole yeah. life. Yeah. Because he felt some way about himself that if I don't show up with the steaks and stuff, dun, 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 yeah, do the thing, yeah, and then yeah. but do you go man? And he would I, what if it's done correctly? The rehabilitation process would be like, dude. And then it make me cry. I'd be like, yeah. hey, Jim, do you want to come? Yeah. You want to yeah. hang with us? Come hang with us. Yeah. And we got food. Or we, you don't have to cook for yeah. us. We just want, you go, you, we want you here because you're freaking Jim. And that would be the first time in a lot of people's lives they've ever heard that. That's right. They go, wait. You're like, yeah, dude. I don't have anything. You're good. You're cool yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, like yeah. hanging with we you. We like you in, like, just for you. And some people go, that's like a that that's where the it took me forty years to get that it took me uh, yeah I'm thirty nine yeah. same it took yeah, yeah. me the first when I was there you go oh we, you're so y'all know everything about me yeah and you're still here and y'all still want to hang to me know? that's the most haunting question human can ask is if you knew everything will you still love me yeah and, and it you, was and when my wife was like I'm not going anywhere and I just want you here I was one of eight kids mm-hmm. that kind of like. Maybe didn't get the attention or love that mm-hmm. granted, and I and I love my parents and I didn't get maybe what I needed. Right, and I would go to church. That was the only place we would see. We were all homeschooled. Mm-hmm. We go to church. There was these girls that were that loved me, mm-hmm. and they thought I was so funny. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't wait to like stuff I learned during the week is to get there and tell them, and they would be like, "We can't wait till John's here." Like we love, John. and I yeah. I went down that path until I was thirty five. That's right. I don't know if there's any other more. <laughs> wherever the love is, yeah. you go to it. Right. And that, it, it, whether it's like, I mean, you've seen people in this town that have, uh, are like influential that I, that I, that you start, you've seen them verbalize something maybe like a little bit like conservative or Republican, mm-hmm. and then they got a lot of love there and they just been. It just goes, so, yeah. Like, I don't know. Who are you? They just been going down the road where the affirmation comes from. What? That, what? That's it. Yeah. Why, and why would you doubt? Why would you? We're all doing that. That's right. That's you right. you do it in a different way than I do it. Or like you go, you're a basketball coach. All you ever known is basketball. And then you're like, well, I'm, I'm taking the gig at the rec league because in there I'm a god. That's right. It, it, in my house, it was like we didn't have any money growing up, and so there was this 
And I remember my dad was a policeman and then he quit and became a minister. And yeah. I remember at a young age, like, oh, if that's what the public thinks of public servants, I'm going to go make money. Yeah. And yeah, 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 then yeah. it just kind of chased it and chased it. And yeah. I remember it was last year. Yeah. Like, this is still pretty fresh. That yeah. my wife was like, hey, like, the amount of how much I love you because of how much money you make is full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else is for your ego, brother. And she goes, you can go do what you want. But just uh, so we both know what I want you, what I want is you. And I didn't, I didn't have a psychology. For, I, did, I didn't know what to do. She said these words and it froze me. She said, John, we have enough. And she turned and walked away. And I did not know what that meant. And that was, that was a year in, in with a tough therapist downtown. Yeah. And it's saying like, Hey, help me unpack this. And then you go, it goes all the way back to John. Hey, I don't need, it, so he's been said, singing and dancing. I don't need to, you don't need to tour in 2024. Or so, you know, I, I'd mm-hmm. like yeah, to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and if it wasn't coming into like, but you, you don't, you, you don't have to, mm-hmm. I have to, I mean, you don't. Yeah. Or I, I, I gotta have this car. No, you don't. I gotta live in, my kids gotta go to that yeah, school. Yeah. Or the, yeah. They don't, they don't. It was Jim Carrey. I think he said, I wish everybody could have everything for like a day to realize that it's not because mm-hmm. outside of being a believer yeah, at a yeah. Christian, everybody out here mm-hmm. is hope is in a better tomorrow, mm-hmm. right? Whether that's a, a, a raise or a new politician, a bigger car, a house. relationship, yeah. your hope, you're hoping in a better tomorrow, mm-hmm. right? And whatever that, and, and he was saying in, in material, I wish everybody could get it so they could realize, oh, don't spend your whole life trying to get it because that's not it. There's, there's nothing up here. In counseling, they call it the tyranny of accomplishing all your dreams because yeah, you go yeah. with you, right? Yeah. You got, yeah. Or yeah. imagine being like a comedian and all you want to ever do is, is be on The Tonight Show. Mm-hmm. You're, you're 20, you know, you're working at the clubs, you're trying to get, you send in the tape, they say no. You're, you know, you go to all, you move to LA, you go to all the meet and greets, you meet the guy, you come friends with the guy, you send him a tape, he says no, you keep going, keep working, and then you're, I mean, it's a hypothetical story, but you're 60, and they go, you got it. And you go to a Burbank in an Uber at 3.30 in the afternoon in front of a crowd that is, and you do your four and a half minutes. smaller than you think. You do your four and a half minutes, Mm -hmm. you walk off stage, and you walk back out of that Uber, and you go, oh. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Yeah. First time I was ever on TV early on in my comedy career at the, uh, I was on Comedy Central or something. Uh, I to forget the name of the show. Uh, Live at Gotham in New York City. Okay, and yeah, they called yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. yeah, they called me. They go, dude, you got it. You got it. And I go, oh, awesome. And I, and I and I remember calling my parents. I wrote this about the story in my book, but I call my parents and I go, hey, I'm on, I'm on TV, right? Which is the which is the biggest, and you. What did I think? Okay, I think I thought um, they were gonna get a. I thought really they get an inflatable projector in the backyard, invite all the neighbors, right. and 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 I never forget this. And I've since discussed this with my parents a bunch. My mom called me and said, "Oh, we don't have that channel." Yeah, and that was that. And dude, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, I thought. I thought this is, uh, uh, yeah. or we're gonna fly there, or we're gonna yeah. we're gonna charter a plane and f- or what to whatever, or like oh, because it was about when when they didn't pick you up for your tennis match when you were ten. I tell business leaders all the time if if he hadn't told you he's proud of you by now, that call's not coming. It's not coming. <laughs> it's not coming. And so, and he probably is. He pr- I know but, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually know he is. He didn't have he didn't have to say that, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah, he didn't have to yeah. say that, and that's fine. Yeah. And so the win is not. The redemption or whatever there is not you finally getting him to whoever he is or finally getting them to apologize right. or finally getting the uh, the revenge money or whatever the thing is or the car right, or right. the house or the, the maybe, last word maybe yeah. the maybe the revenge is not that or not the redemption sorry not revenge is not that it is oh if i don't get that cool i'll be all right yeah i would like to may and i'd like to mm. you still should get up with a purpose in life to go do something or to help people or but if i don't but it's almost what you just said earlier. Maybe the call in life um, is to be the caliber person who shows up so that regardless of whether you can cook, whether you're the funny guy, whether yeah. you're the like the smart guy with all the Never answers, yeah. people think, I'm going to call that guy. Come on over. And like, I just come hang. 
you come to hang with us. And if you're, yeah, you're just because you're you. I will say, I, I, I have come to all these realizations, or, or I don't even know what you call it, whatever, wherever I'm at now. My hand was forced, so I don't want to sit here and be dishonest with everybody. That you should. Oh yeah, because yeah, I yeah. didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should be honest with. I, I didn't. Now I had a chance to respond mm -hmm. afterwards. Right, but right, right. I. Oh, it's so much better to live this life of honesty or or. Um, gotcha. I, I yeah. didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can't sit here like, well, here's what like. Yeah. I, but I think I think you can look and say, and and this is my hope for everybody who talks about like you know America's on decline and this yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. Is my wife and I sat at a, at a table and looked at each other like this yeah. as adults and said, "We're gonna keep doing this because if we are, everything has to be different from this minute forward." You, yeah, and. We got to keep it doing. Didn't this. have to go to Ash first, and that's my yeah. my dream for folks is if you can at least think I'm gonna get on the path to redemption before it goes to Ash. I think that's yeah. possible. It uh, definitely possible. It's definitely possible. possible. It's well, hard. well, it's hard. I when I when everything happened to me, I go, um, oh, this is rock bottom. This is rock bottom, and I never forget this. The therapist goes. The therapist goes. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. You decided this was enough. Like he's like, you st I still have a house, uh, a career, uh, a family that loves me, uh, money, uh, my health. Uh, this is not rock bottom. There are, <laughs> trust me, there are, <laughs> yeah, there slow. are, there's so deeper. There's so many more bottoms below this, including death. Right. That you decided, hey. <laughs> this is the bottom you, you decide the bottom right and then you go I, I, I gotta get some help or I We're gotta done. yeah the bottom is I'm done until you're until you're not on this planet anymore you have not reached the bottom I <laughs> I won't I won't believe this because you've talked about this in other interviews but um, and I'll just leave with this the growing like just running crisis stuff for years sitting yeah. with police department stuff the only way through that is running what? Running Christ, like helping with death notifications. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. The only path through yeah. is a midnight black sense of humor. Yeah. Like yeah, dark. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I can just imagine a couple of guys standing around their buddy and being like, looking over their casket and being like, that's rock bottom. <laughs> right? like, oh, yeah. Dude, like, we, I mean, but that, uh, a sense of humor that, is there. Uh, of the, the uh, If there's a, a, a thing in your family... You gotta go, you know, we can all joke about everything, but the one thing you can't joke about, uh -huh. that's that's the gold. That's the thing that needs to be yes healed. When I was in I was in treatment and I, after I've been there for like a month or so, and I, you come in depressed at the bottom. Everybody's you know nobody wants to eat, nobody wants just want to sleep all day, just want to, and then you know you start to kind of make some progress, and your family's like we love you, and you're like you know if, if I can complete this, and I the can. Horse likes you finally. Yeah, the <laughs> horse likes you. Yeah, you say, and then you can you're like well maybe I don't know I probably can't ever do comedy again, but I could at least go to the golf course and go mm -hmm. to Chick-fil-A. And you start to be like, oh, maybe. And then your agent calls and you're like, well, you know, once you're, you can, you go, oh, you kind of see the path forward. Mm -hmm. And I was starting to like feel a little bit better, start to kind of make, you know, joke around and start to, you know, and my buddy put his arm around me one day and he goes, listen, I know you're doing great and congratulations on the progress. And I really think this is amazing. I just want to let you know, just don't take suicide off the table just yet. <laughs> I go, oh my god! <laughs> Which is like, dude, I, dude, <laughs> that's a great. It's horrible. Friend. It's horrific. It's a but it's great so, friend. It, it, dude, I, that's the hardest I've ever laughed in my whole life. Yes. It's the hardest. If you say, "What's my favorite joke of all time?" <laughs> and we were, I remember exactly where I was, and he put his arm around me, and it's the, such the misdirection of that of joke. Course, he yeah, goes, yeah. "I just want to let you know, you're doing great. I just want to let you know, don't take suicide off the table just <laughs> yet." Which is like. Gosh, dude, it's so it's it was so therapeutic. Yeah, and and a lot of times, a lot of times, who is policing the jokes is someone that was not in that conversation. Correct. They Almost go, always, he said it to his the, the guy that told it to me. I don't want to give his a name mm -hmm. away his name because it's confidentiality. But that guy loved me. Of course, I knew he did. Right. We were roommates. Yes, and we cried ourselves to sleep. Yes, over our current situations nightly. Yes, nightly. And we, and that's all we had. He had, he had earned the right. Yes. And you go, well, you can't say that, or like who, according to who? You get to decide that. You get to decide. Yes. And if I'm at my live show and I'm saying these things to my crowd, they are loving it. The transaction 
is here. Yes. You weren't there. Right. And, and you, you don't get a 30 second clip spun out. Yeah. yeah. Or you or you could you were like, oh, you don't understand. Or like sometimes you see a That's uh, never funny. It's not uh, for you. It wasn't for you. Right. And that's a Republican, Democrat, yes, black, yes, white, yes, 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 yes. rich, poor. You're like, if that that you weren't the audience for this. Yes. And that's fine. Yes. You're like, oh, but but there's a whole crowd dying laughing. Right. So this is our moment. You can be offended. Like I don't I don't enjoy this comedian. Mm-hmm. You can do that. That's allowed cuz I'm allowed to do that. But you can't say this guy can't tell jokes. Right. <laughs> yeah, right, but right. clear there's a lot of people cuz we're like having him. a family conversation. Yeah, so that's right. yeah, yeah. Dude, it's awesome. Hey, thanks for coming by, man. Dude, absolutely. I come by anytime. You're uh super busy. Oh, uh, yeah, telling jokes. Yeah. yeah. Going to get my egos met needs met. <laughs> no, just, yeah. you give people like me uh Space to breathe, and that's that's a yeah, gift. Well, I hope I it's hope a human the, gift. I hope the this is not a written, it's not a comedy podcast or whatever. But I go. I hope that if I got, I would I needed this message, so I was like, oh, I'm made it not the other side of it. I still got a lot of work to do. Yeah. But you go, man, somebody that would hear this would be like, oh, oh, just like before you even say the horrific things, you just mm-hmm. like. First you think them, then you write them down. Somebody write them down and burn them, and then you got to say them to a therapist. But mm-hmm. even saying it to a therapist is five steps before you even say it to a friend. This guy doesn't care about you. He's a therapist. He getting hard, He does not care. Right. If you said the most horrific things, mm-hmm. he'd be like, huh. And he's heard it all, right. by the way. Yep. Nothing that anyone is here is Nothing. watching is like, dude, th- yeah, but my situation, mm. I have, uh, you, as a, what you do for a living, mm-hmm. we've heard them all. We've heard them all. Heard That's them right. all. And they you go, oh, you're still... You can come hang out you with didn't us. Flinch. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah we well, can come hang out with us in in a contextual way that like there's people that will welcome you. Yeah, and that's true. Right? You're not alone. Yeah, yeah. and that's what the message that I, I thought I was. Dude, that's alone. awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming by, dude. Much love, brother. See you, Zanies. I'll come by. Let's go, dude. Let's do it. <laughs> See you there. Hey, what's up, Deloney here. Listen, you and me and everybody else on the planet has felt anxious or burned out or chronically stressed at some point. In my new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life, you'll learn the six daily choices that you can make to get rid of your anxious feelings and be able to better respond to whatever life throws at you so you can build a more peaceful, non-anxious life. Get your copy today at johndeloney.com. Thanks for joining us as we wrap up today's show. So, uh... Chris took a video at a concert a few months ago and I just wrote back, wrote him back and said, no, John, no. And he said, dude, Nickelback is my favorite band forever and ever. Ah, man, I added that part. But for the world's greatest Nickelback fan, song's called Photograph and it goes like this. Look at this photograph. Every time... Time I do it makes me laugh. How did her eyes get so red? What the hell's on Joey's head? Is this where I grew up? I think the present owner fixed it up. That's about all I can get through. <laughs> I love you guys. Stay in school, don't do drugs. Every time I do it makes me laugh.